Welcome to Tag Management Tips and Tricks. Today, I want to focus on setting up click listening and auto event tracking using Google Tag Manager. Specifically for our use case here today, it's going to be around Google Analytics. Creating an event within Google Analytics via Google Tag Manager to track a user's interaction with a button click on the website. This is probably the most common use case for setting these up, and it's what I get questions about all the time. So we're going to walk you through just how exactly to do this, and then the simple way to identify some different elements in order to be able to effectively make the trigger for firing your events. So, so you have a website, and you have different interactions that, it, that you want to track that a user might take on the website. And these might be micro conversions, these might be macro conversions. And examples of these might be a form submission for like a contact us page or a login to your application or the back end or just a login to their account. Now the ideal way obviously of setting this up is going to be purely on the data layer or with the data layer approach which that's going to take the development team implementing that data layer and whenever a user clicks on those particular buttons, pushing an event to the data layer with an event name that's unique to that particular interaction, as well as all the contextual information that you would want to collect with that particular click or with that particular interaction on the website. Now, in some instances, this might not be possible. You know, maybe it's a new functionality that, or a new page that's just pushed up on your website and the data layer wasn't fully implemented on that. Or maybe it's just a interaction that's not super, super critical on the website, but it's still something that you want to track. Um, but because it wasn't critical, that dev time wasn't allocated to implementing that data layer event for that particular click. In these cases, what we're going to do is use the functionality of Google Tag Manager and how it can automatically listen to clicks on a page in order to be able to configure this. Now, traditionally, in how this would work would be we would identify the button, we'd have to inspect it, we'd have to identify the type, the name, the ID, the class, all that good stuff. And then we would create a trigger around those different items. And we're still doing that to an extent, but we're using Google Tag Manager in order to be able to tell us exactly what it is that we need to configure. The issue with looking just within the elements here in the development console is sometimes a button, the actual click or what should actually be triggering that tag is not easily available. It might be behind some other elements, it might be in front, it might be one little piece on there. So you might be missing some tracking depending upon where the user is interacting with that particular form or that particular button. So we're gonna circumvent this by using the functionality Google Tag Manager. So we're gonna focus on creating a Google Analytics event for this click on this login button. To do this, I'm going to need to enable a few things within Google Tag Manager. So the first thing that you need to do, and what you should do as soon as you're creating a new container, is in the variables area, we need to configure all of the different built-in click variables that are available to us. So to do that, if you click on variables here, the top section is built-in variables. I'll just click to configure. Scroll down to where the clicks area and just enable all these. Once I do that, I now have the variables available that I will be using. I'm going to need to come in here and create a trigger. Just call it a generic click trigger. And what I need here is just for all clicks. Any click that happens on my website, I want a trigger to fire. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna force GTM to recognize all clicks and push GTM.click events to the data layer. 
So I'm going to save that. Now I have those two critical foundation pieces created. Now what I can do, throw GTM into preview mode so that I can use the GTM debug console on my actual page to see what exactly is going on. So now I'm going to flip back to my site. I need to refresh the page so that the GTM preview window can come up. And now what you'll notice now that those variables are configured and that trigger is applied is that anytime I click anywhere on the page, you're going to see these gtm.click triggers um, or events that have happened. When I come here and click on my login button, that's obviously going to push another gtm.click event. I can come over here within the debug console, click on that event, and then come over here to variables. Now, remember those click variables that I enabled? Since those are available, I can see exactly what it is that's populating those variables after that, that button interaction. So I can see here, click class, click element, click ID, click car target, click text, the whole nine. Now, my ID is going to be unique to that individual button. So that's probably what I'm going to use in most cases for the trigger for my event. So now that I know what it is exactly that I need to trigger, so when a user completes this interaction and that click has these particular elements or this click ID, that's when I want that event to fire. So I'm going to hop back over here into Google Tag Manager. I'm going to create my Google Analytics event tag. GA, whatever nomenclature you want to use, events, login, tag configuration. I'll just use the templates, universal analytics tag. My tracking ID, which is already a variable. That's another best practice that we'll cover at some other point. An event, category, click, action, Login, submission, contact us, login. So I've configured my tag. Now I need to come down here and create a trigger for that particular interaction. I can just click the trigger and then add a new trigger up there in the top right. This is going to be a login click. And then in my trigger configuration, I'm going to come down here, all elements, similar to how I did my generic one, but this one we don't want to fire on every single click on the website or on that page. So what I'm going to do is select some clicks and then use those variables that I had created before. So click ID and come back over here. I see exactly what that click ID is. WordPress dash, dash submit. I can say equals and then I can save it. So I now have a Google Analytics event set to fire when that login click happens, sending up an event with the category click, action login submission, label contact us login. I can save this just to double check, make sure that everything's working and that tag's gonna be firing when it's supposed to. I will refresh my preview, come back to the page, refresh that page so my changes can take effect. Click on my button on that gtm.click, my GA event login tag fire. So using those variables and using gtm debug I can very, very easily and very quickly identify what it is, a, what elements of a particular button that I need to then trigger tags off of. This is going to simplify the process and really speed up the process for implementing new tags and creating new triggers based upon user interactions on the site. Hope this was helpful. Thank you very much for joining us for our tag management tips and tricks today. And 
I hope you join us in the future for more. Thanks.